Okay, so we are live now. Uh, hi everyone, I'm really happy to uh, to be here, to have you all. Um, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, so today it's, um, it's an event about uh, product innovation and uh, we organize this uh, through the uh, design and critical thinking community. So it's a small online community. Uh, we uh, try to uh, make sense together of the complexity of our work as innovators, as designers, uh, change makers. And um, this is um, the right uh, place, right, to discuss about innovation, product innovation. So um, let you, Klaus and uh, Michael, uh, present yourself uh, and what we will discuss today. <laughs> Thank so you, the ground Kevin. is yours. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is KP, Klaus-Peter Fram. Uh, I'm from Hamburg, Germany, and I'm one of the co-creators of the product field, um, the framework that uh, we are going to introduce today, that we're going to discuss today. And I'm also the co-founder of uh, a company called Field, and we are uh, actually building software based on the logic of the product field. And uh, we are going to get uh, acquainted to that maybe later uh, during the session or maybe uh, even in a, a following workshop. Um, but right now, um, I'm not, uh, I don't have anything further to add. I would like to hand over to Michael, who is going to have uh, present some slides and some other stuff to us. And so, um, yeah, Michael, go ahead, please, fire away. Thanks, Klaus, thanks, Kevin. I'm happy to be here today. Um, please prepare yourself. Uh, you need a pen and paper, maybe an iPad <laughs> works as well. Um, but I'd love to draw something with you today. I'd love to draw the product feed today with you, with everyone here. And this will happen in just a few minutes. Before that, I'll give a short introduction. And after we've been drawing the product field, um, we organize this follow-up workshop. And then I will share some principles behind the product field, why I believe uh, that this, this method or this framework um, works quite well. And then we dive directly into shapes of innovation. That's uh, the fun part. I'm really looking forward to this part. And afterwards, we have time at the tables here in AirMeet uh, for a discussion. So, um, as Klaus said, I'm Michael, I'm Michael, I'm Michael Schieben, which translates to pushy, push, <laughs> Michael push. So I'm a co-founder of Field as well, co-author of the product field. There's a picture of me, KP and Wolfgang Wopera Beholz, who's the third uh, of our team uh, back in 2015. Programming is my craft. I started uh, to, to view, click view source in the browser back when I was like 15 and programmed my way into the world. But design is really what, what, what shapes my mindset. And yeah, I'd love to facilitate workshops, work with people. And yeah, nowadays I'm in the role of product lead at field.so. So feel free to say hi um, after after this session, and yeah, be sure to check out field.so. Here's a little story. I um, met um, Professor Eric from yesterday, and uh, he was like lending me this book by. Horst Rittel, but he was also sharing that story. You know, Rittel was teaching at uh, Hochschule for, for Gestaltung in, um, in, in, in Ulm. And um, Eric Fromm's parents were students of Horst Rittel. And he told me the story that uh, back then in, in Ulm, they were doing like sketches on paper. And then the first rule was to like throw the sketch away and come up with like boxes and diagrams about the process and mapping all the knowledge and having like a very strategic approach to the design. And once they, they make this diagram, this very analytical way to express thinking, they kind of went to the junk and got the sketches back and like unfold the sketch. And then we say, oh, that's the right solution. This, this was the story of, uh, of Ulm. And um, so this is a book and 
Yeah, there's one quote by Rittel uh, that I'd love to share with you. Um, As my eyeglasses don't see on my behalf, but help me see better, one might use the computer not to think on one's behalf, but to reinforce and enhance one's ability to think. And when we talk about thinking, we we often talk about I think, you think, but uh, I would love to blend in some uh, Bruno Latour here, not to say cogito ergo sum, but cogitamos. So we think, and this leads to another um, quote from from the book Universe of Design. Um, this is uh, Rittel's teaching from from Berkeley, um, where he says. Let's try to establish a coordinate system for the problems arising out of the reformulation of innovation tasks. Its primitive nature is part of the price of generalization, and we shall cross several disciplines and domains. Okay, that said, this leads to the product field. So we thinking, cogitamos, generalization, crossing several disciplines, and having a unified frame of reference. The product field is a sense-making framework for product innovation. It's product-centered. So whenever you see that diamond shape tonight, this is me referring to products. So product in this talk and then the product field are represented by a square rotated by 45 degrees, this uh, diamond shape. The product field is holistic. It's very easy to understand because it's based on a simple definition of innovation. Product innovation as the activities of realization and introduction of new redesigned or substantial improved products. The product field is very visual and it's valuable and popular. Klaus and Wolfgang has, have been like three times at South by Southwest conference and it's used among very like different companies. So zweites deutsches Fernsehen is completely different than uh, Kühne und Nagel. The product field helps teams to build better products. But when I say product, you can also um, take another term like object system, or let's say work, that which is made. Other people might say like services. So I have like, a, or we have share very broad understanding of products. These are all physical things, consumer goods, services, website, books, TV shows, all that can be mapped out. And the product field helps to make better books, websites, TV shows. So maybe we can agree on the term ergon, the Greek word ergon, the work, the work. Michael? Yes. Um, there is, seems to be something wrong with your slides. Um, we still see the, um, the the agenda today introduction and only half of your actual slide. Maybe you need to reload or, or something like that. Oh, thanks for interrupting me. Because <laughs> I'm Sorry. sharing slides here with you. Um, so let's stop screen sharing. And I thought it was only me. So then I asked Kevin and he, he said he sees the same thing. No. Okay. Yeah, I was not sure on my side if it was, uh, <laughs> was on purpose or not. Yeah. What's so, happening now? Are you oh, seeing slides? Yeah, but one half is, yeah, but it's broken. It's somehow broken. Um, I'm going to, I have, I've sent you a screenshot. Um, no, on, you, don't, on, you don't have to. I'll check it once again. Yeah, is this working? Seems, now it works. Yes, it seems better. Okay. <laughs> now you're seeing the diamond shape, right? Yeah, so we'll, we'll... Whenever you see that shape, um, I'm talking about products. And we also see the the, the previous. Uh, sorry, we we also see also see half of the previous uh, or partially the previous slides as well. <laughs> it's like it's like a bit uh, broken. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a presentation mode. It's just your working space in a, a mi mixture between your working space and the presentation mode. Mm. It's really strange. 
So please hold the line, lifting <laughs> slides here. Um, let me share just this window. Is it better now? Yes. Yes. That's better. Okay. So it's visual, valuable, popular, but we've already been on this slide. We're talking about the work, the work. Next slide. The product field establishes a shared language and visual form. So by being a visual form and not just language, it helps to facilitate communication and it reveals insights through illustration. People use the product field to create a shared map, spot gaps, find unities, connect the dots, and analyze strengths and weaknesses of one's product idea or innovation project. Now, I'd love to draw the product field with you together, but we'll do a like, really quick sketching session I stop sharing once again. I share another screen with you. Sorry for that. Never used Airmeet before. It's a beautiful program, but it's hard to share things. So <laughs> you're seeing my hand? Yes. OK. We are good to go. So if you have pen and paper, please sketch with me the product field. I give you the construction principles, and uh, you've heard the definition of innovation as activity of realizing, this is a vertical axis, and introducing new or substantially changed products. So the product should be in the center of your page. And please don't keep it abstract in your mind. Please fill in one product, one project, maybe a book you're currently working on and this is right in the center of your paper and what you want to do with this concrete thing fill in the name of your product um, to create innovation is you want to realize it and you want to introduce it and giving these two to access like introducing means on the left side we have like the inside on the right we have the outside so we introducing it to the outside from the heart of the organization, from your lab, from your desk, from your computer to the public. And on this vertical axis, it's about realization. So things that are maybe intangible or more abstract become real, they become concrete, they become tangible. And by saying tangible, this, this goes well for digital products as well. So it's touchable. I can uh, click that button. It's kind of materialized through zero and ones. Okay, product in the center, two axes. And now we connect these four dots or you draw a square around the diamond. And this is the core of your innovation. And the core of one innovation is described through the value proposition. Value proposition means it's a solution for problems, which is unique, the solution, so uniqueness up here, compared to alternatives. If this work is not solving any problem, it might not be worth building. If it's not unique compared to alternatives, um, it might be not worth selling or might it be not worth buying because you can buy or get the alternative. But no product or no innovation exists in a black box. So let's not only look at the core of the innovation, but also at its context. And the context is marked by these diagonal, di di diagonal lines to, to, towards the outside. And the context is not closed because we don't want to limit your perspective or the things you want to consider when looking 
at the context. And on the outside, intangible things, we talk about users that pursue certain motivations. I'm not sure if you're able to multitask, but in your mind, you have your product. So now you can write users, but think about the users, people that will use or read your product or book you're currently working on. They're not just users, they're also customers on the outside. And in order to get the thing you're innovating on, in the hands of the customers or users, it needs to be distributed. So down here is distribution. To distribute something, you need to produce it. We're talking about production here. Production leverages enablers like time, money, resources, knowledge to create a solution. And these resources are led by drivers. One field is left here, one area is left. It's intangible, it's on the inside. We are speaking and talking about goals here. These are like 12 terms that are really helpful to discuss when, when speaking about innovation. And we can kind of like summarize them up here is the error area of, of the element, the, 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 the this summarization for, for user value. So it's all about the value up here, the market, the resources, and the idea of an innovation. So this was like really quick because I want to share what you can use the product feed for and uh, talk a bit about like other things. But there's a video on productfeed.com where my colleague like Wolfgang explains it in detail. For now, it's important for you to remember two things. The core activities of realization and introduction, the product at the center, the context wide open. So this is where critical thinking might happen, like considering things uh, in the context. Okay, this is the product field, and now I'm going back to the slides. And I hope you could follow. The product field is used first. When you use a product field with a team or with other people, you lay out the product field canvas as we did right now to establish a common vocabulary for your team and your stakeholders. This could happen on paper, this could happen uh, on a wall, on a whiteboard, but this can also happen in Miro, Mural or software. Next, you use this form to gather insights and locate all the knowledge, think of the two axes, on the product feed to create a shared map. Once you have it, you can analyze links and tangents and see how all elements, all cues on the map relate to each other and um, use like checking routines. These are uh, sentence templates to kind of see, is this a consistent description of the product and is it coherent? Once you checked, that it's consistent and coherent, you might want to identify strengths and weaknesses, and then you are able to visualize patterns and to define the character of an innovation, and also see chances and hinderers of success. So are you, is your team able to create an innovation that it's easy to realize and introduce? And a visualization like this force field helps to bring everyone on board and create a shared understanding, which then leads to commitment and aligned action. The product field also is a recursive a fractal form. 
Um, so you can not only map the product, but you can use this form to map subsystems or features, or you can zoom out and map the whole portfolio of your company split into products. Still thinking of products in this very broad understanding, as I introduced earlier. You can also think of the role of a certain product in the context of a portfolio. So mapping a website in the role of this supports distribution for the larger system and uh, use it to map alternatives. So your competitors' products and uh, gather insights, collect insights about competition. So what happens um, when you do product thinking with a product field and you understand that's a recursive fractal form, then you are not establishing tree structures for your companies, but you're connecting all products, all activities, all ergon, all work done to a networked portfolio or portfolio network. And you can use a product field to map progress over time or plan a strategy um, over time. So if you want to try the product field with more time, uh, we run a second session in this uh, context, in this group. And I currently ask you to, to just share your email with KP. I'm not sure if it's working via chat or is there a direct message functionality? Maybe Kevin yes. can help. Yes, there's um, a chat on your right hand side uh, of the on the right hand side of the interface here. So everyone, if you want to participate in the the workshop, don't hesitate to to leave your contact details. <laughs> what will happen is um, and before the before the workshop, Klaus sends us a questionnaire, like five little questions, uh, where you can like already plot out your insights, your knowledge. It will be shared workspace, so don't share sensitive information. But you know, start like um, collecting insights about your product, your project, and then there's this this workshop, one hour again, um, where Klaus and maybe me are helping. To, to kind of like create the whole map based on the information you already collected. And then also generate a force field based on a strengths and yeah, weakness analysis. Because the product field is not only collecting like the positive things, it's more like a medium of truth <laughs> and honesty and integrity. So you met everything that um, influences the success of your product, positive and negative things, and even like contradicting insights um, that need to, yeah, or that, that shape the, the environment, the context of your product. Okay, this is the workshop invitation. Um, take your time, but then please share your email address and um, the name of your product project, and Klaus is able to kind of set up the questionnaire. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, maybe it's time for questions, right? Yeah, um, maybe it's time for questions. Time for questions. Okay. If there are any questions, otherwise I will share some more slides and ideas because this was just the mm -hmm. basic introduction. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. So is there already have... a question yet? Um, I'm happy to. Yeah. So. If you have questions, don't hesitate to leave in the chat a uh, question. Um, then I can give you the mic as well, so you can join us on the stage. Uh, now there's no questions. Oh, so there's a question from uh, François Capel, uh, value versus uh, value proposition canvas. Um, um, you can invite uh, François if he wants uh, to ask the question directly. Uh, to the stage. Hello, François. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Cool. Thank you. So I was it's, it's, uh, I'm missing a bit of context to understand what's the the real value you this uh, this canvas or this way of representing things add to a strategizer canvas, for example. 
Yes. The fundamental difference is a geometric shape, the coordinate system based on the two activities uh, of innovation and how this affects your work and adds value to teamwork, collaboration and shared understanding. I think um, this will become more clear in the next few minutes when I share, share other slides. Okay. But the, the fundamental difference is the geometry and the coordinate space of the field. There's no, there's forms, but there's no coordinate space in business model canvas, or mm -hmm. at least not in that rigidity. Okay. Maybe seeing that each in action will help them. Cool. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, so I continue with the principles, right? Yes, we can go ahead. Screen sharing still okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, no, we don't see anything right now. Sorry. Ah, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, replaying too too quick. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I better ask. Now it's working. Yes. Excellent. Still working. Yes. Okay. So this is nothing that I understand. Uh, uh, that I understand when we, or that I was understanding when we were creating the product field. It was more like through experiences. So whenever I brought the product field as facilitator in a different context. Um, I will share some learning that happens in, in applying the product field to certain situations. Um, and there's a group graphic keyboard from 1917s where, and I found it in the book Visual, Visual Consulting by David Sibbett. And um, they're talking about the advantages of different visualization styles. And obviously the product field is a mandala, right? Um, and the mandala is perfect for wholeness or to visualize wholeness. And when there's wholeness, you perceive um, and see gaps and unities under a diversity of perceptions. So this is how the product field helps to connect different organizational silos, maybe, or let's say different career passes or different like mental models about um, innovation in one form. And this is through the, the geometry and the coordinate system that um, you get a new, more complex and whole truth by involving different perspectives. So this Venn diagram might be very familiar to you uh, from IDEO and the uh, uh, design thinking school. Um, for the product field, there's also marketability because we draw a distinction between customers and users. Think of business software. Mainly the people who make the buying decisions are not the only users, right? Or think about parents uh, making decisions, buying decisions for their kids. So uh, we believe that this fourth dimension or fourth element of marketability is very valuable to reflect on product ideas and businesses. Uh, where the buying decision is not made by the user. And this is how in the form, like different perspectives come together from executives to engineers, uh, growth hackers or growth disciplines to marketing and research and development. And then the product field acts form of innovation. There's so much buzz around innovation. And there's so many mantras and saying and advice that you get and collect. Um, but it's hard to kind of like combine and to relate and to, yeah, even like manage the differences and pick the appropriate methodology or process um, for a certain situation. And the product field helps you to collect the knowledge and to connect all this knowledge and so you gain like deep innovation wisdom. And what we share on this screen is the design thinking steps from empathy to the definition of maybe a how might we question to the ideation of a unique solution than prototyping and testing. And the product field um, is process agnostic. So you can use that whole form to plot out and map other methodologies 
um, in this example, design thinking. And if you don't mind, I want to continue for yeah, a few more minutes to share like different shapes of innovation and what we have realized when working with the um, product field. So this is what I'm switching back once again to the camera to sketch out different shapes of innovation. Let's start with a simple one. Everyone's talking about problem solution fit. You may look at your own little version of the product field, but obviously problem solution fit is something that we discuss on this axis from here to there. This is where we discuss problem solution fit in the product field. Then there's another thing, I'm not sure if you heard about it, like scratch your own itch. It's sometimes like a recommendation for, for young people founding startups. So solve your own personal problems. If you want to like visualize, scratch your own itch in the form of the product field, um, then it's like really interesting what, what's, what's happening. Um, you, startup founder, are the driver, but you are also the user, right? <laughs> because you're scratching your own, own itch. And uh, this means like driver is also on the outside, user is also um, on the inside. But continue that means, oh, there's no distinction or no clear distinction between like goals and motivations. So that's kind of like the idea is like equal to the value for starting with scratch your own itch. So then we can talk about just a tiny saying again, and then we could looking at lean startup, it's eat your own dog food, it's that's coming from Microsoft. And there was another Microsoft manager who said, no, 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 let's stop saying like, eat your own dog food. We call it like eat your own ice cream because our products are not as dog food, but as ice cream. What does eat your own dog food mean? Um, so we have the, the food here in the center. This is the thing we are creating. It's ice cream and people on the inside working on that ice cream or Excel should bring the, themselves in the position of the outside. So become like buyers or users of the pro, uh, product. So eat the ice cream. Here's another one that's very easy to understand in the form of the, the product field. And this is uh, co-creation. Co-creation, a project uh, we bring in someone from the outside or a customer in order to, to produce valued outcome. Um, Co-creation in the form of the product field goes like this. You have a user here on the outside, but you bring in the user and make him an enabler. And with this user, you start to ideate and sketch out um, the solution. So this is co-creation. And you've seen the image of um, design thinking, but then there's also Lean Startup. Um, and Lean Startup mainly is this circle of, yeah, building, measuring, learning. And if you flip the Lean Startup circle, and um, down here, we talk about building. It's about measuring and about learning. And this is a loop. And once you overlay the image of 
uh, lean startup with the image of um, design thinking, for example, you can figure out like the advantages of um, of of each methodology. So that's it for now. Um, I'm happy to 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 hear some more questions and uh, then also yeah take a seat at the table and. Um, discuss how this relates to the work you are doing, to critical thinking and um, design in general. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So everyone, if you want to discuss with uh, Michael and Klaus, Peter, uh, you can just uh, uh, join one of the table where we will be in in a few seconds and you can ask questions, whatever you have in mind that was not clear or want more uh, yeah, more details on it. So thanks everyone for joining this event and see you soon in the, on the tables. Great. Thank you. Thank you.